Welcome all to D-Lab Electronics. I am Cybot, Overseer of Shop Operations. Watch as we modify a vintage Magna 107 hot chassis amplifier. A Widowmaker. Welcome to D-Lab. On the bench today, I've got a cool vintage Magna Starlet amplifier built in 1955. It says Magna, but is that really Magnatone? Don't know. This amp is one of those hot chassis models, so it's extremely dangerous to operate, especially if you come in contact with ground and touch that chassis. It'll knock out your fillings. So the task is make the amp safe and make it sound better. Can we do that with the standard layout? I don't think so. A 55 Magnus Starlet arrives D-Lab for repair. It's a dangerous hot chassis design. How can D-Lab make this safe and reliable? So let's take a look at the little Starlet. You can see she's pretty much original. That speaker is definitely original because it's in bad shape. But that output transformer does not belong there. And I don't know about this little curly cue going to the speaker either. Filter cap is more likely wasted. Let's take a look underneath. Here's the bottom side of the amp. There's not a whole lot going on there. She pretty much looks stock, except for that nice output transformer that's been added. So the question is, should this amp be fixed the way it is and remain dangerous? Should I add in isolation transformer and make it at least safe to operate, but it would still be an underpowered amplifier? Well, I had some discussion with the owner. I said, what do you want from this amp? He says, I want it safe, reliable, and it'd be nice if it could have a little more power. He also wants the ability to hook up external speakers. I said, well, if I do any of that, more than likely, we're going to destroy the collector's value of this amp. He said he doesn't care. So, let me tell you guys my game plan. The output training is incorrect. Tubes are unusable. D-Lab has determined that a power transformer must be added. There is no choice. A complete redesign is in order. All right, guys, here's a game plan. As you know, I have updated many of those hot chassis K amplifiers with a standard power transformer, making them safe. But when I did that, I had to convert all the tubes to 6 volt. So it was quite the undertaking. Well, guess what? That's what we're going to do here. So here's the plan. That filter cap is gone. And in its place, we're going to have a power transformer. This transformer will provide the same B plus as what you would see in a Fender Champ. And since we're talking about Champs, this will be our new output transformer. This is a Champ output transformer that are sold by AmplifyParts.com. I've had great luck with these. And the beauty of it is, is it has taps for 4 and 8 ohm, which is what the customer wants. So this guy is going to reside here power transformer here. The tubes are all those strange voltages like a 50C, 535W4, 12AX7. These are coming out. All right. So we're going to remove all the tubes, but we're going to maintain those two positions. So the new tube lineup will be a 6X5 rectifier, 6V6 output tube, and we're going to maintain a 12AX7 as a preamp. So to start this task, what I need to do is completely gut this amp, except for the volume control and tube sockets. Everything else is leaving. We're going to reconfigure it and make this thing a safe Class A amplifier. There's no choice a complete redesign is in order. How would D-Lab go about this? Can the transformers reside on the main chassis? Will the entire amp require rewiring? Can D-Lab pull this off 
Will the purest be happy? Most important, will the customer be happy? So step one will be to get everything off this chassis. I know a lot of you guys may be saying, oh my God, I can't believe you're doing that. Well, you want an amp that works great, won't shock you? This is what you have to do. It doesn't uh, make any sense whatsoever to repair an amp that's dangerous. So I'm taking everything out. We'll go from there. Well, there it is. Stripped down chassis, right down to the tube sockets, couple jacks, volume pot. Now it's time to rebuild it. Here's the pile that came out of it. Here's the old tubes. So as I stated earlier, power transformer is sitting in this position, output transformer this way. Now, the power cord used to come in through this hole, so obviously I can't use that anymore. So I will be relocating that to this end of the chassis. Let's get things mounted up and you'll see how this is gonna to come together. So here's where we're at. I got the power transformer and the output transformer mounted. Relocated the AC in here and there is a fuse underneath. Let me show you bottom side. Here she is bottom side. It's my fuse that I added. Line cord will come in here. We'll be reusing the dial lamp. This is my high voltage and six volts coming off the transformer. Primary side. Here is the primary of the output transformer, secondary. Then I added some terminal strips. This one will support the resistors and caps needed for the 12AX7 and the 6V6. This one will house the filter caps since the old filler cap is now covered up. It's looking good. D-Lab is making excellent progress on the modification of the Magna Amp. However, he'll soon discover that there's a lurking issue that he overlooked. Now here's an update on the progress of the Magna modification. It's really looking great. You see my power supply is all wired up, got our filter caps. There's my screen circuit, a plate, and the preamp power. The only thing I didn't check in this amplifier was the switched pot. I assumed it was the original and according to the schematic. That should have been a one meg pot. But before I wired in, I better check it. So I had to reposition things and the cabinet wanted to fall over. My meter was in a bad position for you to see the display. On and on and on. Let's check this pot. So according to the schematic, it should be a one meg. Now I'm on the two meg scale. Look at there. That ain't one meg. Let's go down to 20K. It's 14.5K. I would have caught this, however, if I didn't, the sensitivity of this amp would have been way down. The other thing that kind of got me wondering is if you look at that pot, there's a nut there and there's this shaft. It's like they had to space it back, putting the contacts of the power switch really close to the chassis. So let's get that changed out with the proper value and continue with the wiring. Alright, mission complete. I'm getting ready to buzz out the amp, but I wanted to give you guys an overview of the new configuration. So we have a 6x5 rectifier, power transformer, output transformer, and this little selector switch is for 4 or 8 ohm tap. This is the jack that goes to the speaker. I have the 6v6 output tube, 12AX7 preamp, and of course, I landed a grounded power cord because it's not a hot chassis amp anymore. Bottom side tour of the Starlet. Well, it's not a Starlet anymore, but at least it looks like one. We have our power coming in through a one amp fuse. This is my 6x5 rectifier base. We've got our filament balancing resistors tied right to that base. The dial lamp this is my power supply capacitor area. So the high voltage comes in through a 250 ohm 2 watt resistor. Then we hit the second cap. Then we go through a 1K resistor and that's screens. And then a 22K and that's our preamp supply. These are all 22 microfarad 400 volt caps. Now we'll move over to the volume pot. 
You can see that is a vintage piece. And yes, it came out of a 1960s Newcomb record player. So it was a one meg pot with built-in power switch. Very cool. Down here we have the back of the speaker select switch. So this is my output jack and then this switch will select either the 8 or 4 ohm tap. Here's my 6V6 with a 470 ohm resistor for the cathode biasing with its little bypass cap. And we have a 560K ohm resistor loading the grid of that tube. Of course with the 12AX7 with the two input jacks feeding pin 2. Now the jacks that were in here originally, they were in really bad shape. So I thought, you know, if we're going to do this right, we should put in some fresh switchcrafts there and of course for the speaker jack. It really turned out well. Now it's time to get an ohm meter, buzz it out, and make sure there's not underlying problems before I apply power. All right, now we're going to buzz out the amp. But before you do that, you should always give it a good thorough inspection. I use a lighted magnifying glass for that process. I look at every connection and make sure that no wires are touching each other. It's real easy for a little strand to get between two connections and cause problems. So after you're satisfied with your visual inspection, then you're going to take an ohm meter and just go across the amp looking for shorts. So I put mine at the 20k scale and you're just going to walk across, okay? So here's my power input. Make sure we don't see any shorts. Go off the power supply to the filter caps. And make sure you don't see a short there. Now this is the ground post of the caps. So you would see a short. And this is my screen feed and my preamp feed. Then we'll walk across here to the 6V6. Remember I said we have a 470 ohm resistor. There he is to ground. Then we move over to the 12AX7. You want to go to each plate. Make sure you do not see any shorts. And then on pin 3 and pin 8, you should see 1.5K to ground. So there's that one. And there's that one. So the amp passes visual inspection and it buzzes out just fine. Next step will be to bring up some power on this guy and see what happens. D-Lab has completed buzzing out the amplifier. Now it is time to apply 120 volts AC. And there is a possibility, if he doesn't use a variac, that he could either damage the amp or even injure himself. Here we go. Initial power up of the little starlet. Now I have a meter monitoring the bias voltage across the 470 ohm resistor. That will let me know that the amp is actually coming to life. Okay, if you do not see that voltage, that's an indication we got something wrong. So I'm bringing her up on my variac. I'm monitoring the current. Volume's on, set about midway. So once we start seeing voltage ramp up on that meter, we should hopefully hear some hiss of the amp. Not a squeal, a hiss. I'm up around 100 volts, and look at there. There's that cathode voltage. I'm up pretty close to 120 volts. She's clean as a whistle. I don't hear any hum. That's a really good sign. All right, let's put a signal through it. Here, here we go. We're gonna run a signal through the amplifier. We're gonna monitor it on an oscilloscope. The output of the amp is going into the D-Lab Audio Test Center. So this will allow me to load plus monitor the output on an external speaker using the audio generator for the input. But the first thing we're gonna do the amp's powered. We're just going to listen to the noise level. So right now, it's on. Volume's all the way down. No hum. Bring up the volume. You can see the old hiss on the scope there. But she looks really good. Now, I'll pop in a signal. I'm putting out about 700 hertz. And there it is. Clean as can be. Now keep in mind, 
this amp does not have tone circuits. So what you put in is hopefully what you get out. She's working great. All right, next step, we need to pull out that old ratty ripped up speaker. I'm gonna replace it with a Jensen Mod 8, eight ohm type. It should really make the amp sing. Well, I got the Mod 8 installed using a looper. Let's take a listen. Wow, what a big difference from stock, huh? Yes, a huge success for D-Lab. Modification was flawless. Would you like a hot chassis amp modified? Would you like to build one from scratch? D-Lab has the documentation. Throw him a bone. Buy me a glass of wine.com.